Thanks, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I'll begin the questions, and we're going to have seven-minute rounds with uh, colleagues as they appear participating. Um, both of you are here speaking on behalf of the PGA Tour, correct? Correct. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Price, you were winning this litigation, correct? Senator, we won some battles, but the litigation was far from over. Well, as Mr. Dunn has said, you were on top, you were winning, and in effect, you made the judgment, maybe it was a business judgment, that the cost of proceeding was too high, and the ultimate agreement involved not only settling this litigation, but also a Saudi investment in a new entity to be created, correct? Senator, we, we really faced a choice. One option was to continue the very expensive, disruptive, and divisive litigation. And we faced a real threat that Lilgolf, which is 100% financed by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, would become the leader of professional golf. And so you decided to take the financing and the investment from Saudi Arabia for this new entity that would also incorporate the PGA Tour, correct? Senator, we have not taken any funding. All we've done is settle the litigation and enter into a framework agreement in which the PGA Tour will be the clear leader of professional golf going But there forward. is an understanding that PIF will contribute an investment As to a, the PGA Tour and the entity that will control it. They, they, they will not be contributing to the PGA Tour. It will be a PGA Tour control subsidiary and any funding what that is they, what is the amount of the Saudi investment that is going to be made that has not been determined yet senator has We're, there been any discussion of what that amount will be it would be uh, there's been discussions it would be a significant amount north of what one, are the amounts north, that have been discussed north of 1 billion and are, the, are there possibilities that additional amounts would be contributed that's in the complete control of the PGA Tour because it's a PGA Tour subsidiary the board's controlled by the PGA Tour, and they have absolute control over how much funding they accept now and in the future. Instead of accepting this amount of money, call it an investment, call it financing, from the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund, did you explore other sources of potential investment? We, we considered that, Senator, but had we gone down that path, we would still be fighting the, the very expensive and disruptive litigation. And we if you still, had won, you would have prevailed. Yeah, we did. We, that was far from a certainty, and Livgoff would have continued to recruit our players and put our tour at jeopardy, and they could have become the leader of professional golf and operated it for the benefit of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. What other sources of funding did you explore? We, we did not have specific conversations with any uh, outside firm, but we, we, we talked about it as potential and what those terms might be. What conversations among yourselves did you have as to the alternative sources of funding? We, we would, we've talked about it at board meetings, a structure similar to what we've set up. Uh, we decided to not pursue it at any point in time because, of the re because we'd still be in litigation and still be fighting the Public Investment Fund, which has $700 billion of assets. Uh, Mr. Price, in the talking points that you prepared for Jay Monahan to brief the policy board, Mr. Dunn was a member of it, uh, you indicate that, quote, PIF will make a financial investment to become a premier corporate sponsor of the PGA Tour and DP World Tour and other international tours PIF, is, PIF also is committed to significant financial support toward the PGA Tour directed causes that positively impact the game on a global basis. And by the way, one of the talking points is Greg Norman will be reassigned to an advisory role determined by PIF when the PGA Tour becomes the manager of the Live Tour. Mr. Dunn has said that the agreement doesn't talk about money, but there was an understanding about PIF investing in the new entity. It's called New Co. Uh, it may have another name now, and that investment you've told us would be more than $1 billion, correct? There's, there's been no agreement reached, that, that, but there have been discussions of that nature. 
And uh, I, would, I would just add that one of the things you mentioned, uh, if we reach an agreement that would be important to us, is the public investment fund providing uh, funding to, supply, to support social causes that would provide additional access to the game? Are you bound by the non-disparagement clause that is very specifically stated in the agreement? N not, not in this form, Senator. Not in this form, but generally? Generally, in a, when you're negotiating a business agreement, it's common to have a non-disparagement clause so that you Well, can, it may be common, okay. Mr. Price, but you are bound by it. And Mr. Dunn, uh, as a member of the policy board and a party to these negotiations, you are bound by it as well, correct? Senator, I'm sitting before United States Senators. Y you can ask me what you want, and I will answer it truthfully. I'm not questioning that you will give us what you believe is the true as to, as to facts. But my understanding of this clause, and you're right, Mr. Price, it is very common to business agreements, is that it would be binding on you, on other members of the policy board, potentially on the athletes, indeed the live requirements for their players, have a similar bar to any of them saying anything negative about any relevant person, including members of the PIF governing apparatus. And so uh, I, uh, I'm going to end my questioning now but uh, for this round. But um, I would like to have a commitment from both of you that uh, the final agreement will not prevent players or PGA Tour executives from commenting on or criticizing actions by, uh, of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Will you make that commitment? That will certainly be an objective we sh would seek, Senator, and I would add that the framework agreement does not prevent our players from speaking their mind on any matters. They're it, open. It doesn't now, but you can't commit that the final agreement will not require them to avoid any such disparaging statement? We, we do not anticipate it having that. You but, don't but anticipate it? Will you commit that it won't have it, that you will not agree to it if it does? I wouldn't recommend it to the policy board for approval if Mr. it did. Mr. Dunn? As, as I'm not doing the negotiation, but as Ron just said, he wouldn't recommend it. I will inform the entire board of your, of your excellent point and it won't, you know, I, I'll guarantee you the board will vote on it. I don't have the power to decide that, but we hear you, we understand, and I'll advocate for it. If, if, we, get to, if we get to an agreement, and, and that, that disparagement, is, that is basically to the term of the agreement. So you, you generally don't want to be saying bad things about each other when you're negotiating, but it has a short-term life on it till we get to a definitive. I'll return to this line of questioning when I continue, Mr. Uh, ranking members recognize. 